Howdy! It's Tubal Cain once again, and I'm here in my garage today to make some tin soldiers with my grandson Tubal Cain Jr. Turn around and say hi, Jordan. Hey. And we've been preheating here for a few minutes already, and I've got uh, the uh, little furnace here, the plumber's furnace, melting down some lead or lead alloy. This is my lid. It's very hot, so I'm going to set it here where I can't get burned. Uh, very nice when you get burned. And the first thing we're going to do here is talk just a little bit about safety. Jordan, go ahead and put those goggles on there. You want to make sure your face and uh, eyes are protected. Most important thing. And then we've got gloves here that we're going to wear. And uh, we're just going to exercise great uh, care because everything is hot, including this little hot plate over here where I am preheating the molds. That little laboratory plate uh, will be, be up to about five or six hundred degrees. And there's our mold for, uh, bring it in a little closer, Jordan, right here. That's our mold for the tin soldiers, and actually they're lead soldiers, but I like to use the word tin. Got a uh, sinker mold back there, too, which we may or may not use, depending on how long this video takes. But let me make a big point here of uh, safety and how important it is not to get hurt. And Number one, you do, do not want water anywhere around molten metal. Do not cool your molds in water. If anything, we want the molds hot. But should you cool them in water and then pour lead in on the water, the water will instantly turn to steam and throw the lead out of the mold up and possibly at your face. So that's the prime concern now when you're working with hot metal and this metal will melt at about 600 degrees. Jordan is taking a temperature reading right now into the molten metal and what does it show now Jordan? Uh, it's pretty fidgety. It's between it's, it's over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay it's only about 500 degrees and that's not hot enough although the metal is molten at this time. There's a lot of dross on the top. Yeah so we'll, we'll get rid of that. While it's uh, coming up to heat here, let me explain just a few other things. This was a very common activity for boys years ago to get one of these for Christmas, but this is a thing of the past. And You know, lead can be melted on the uh, kitchen stove if your wife will let you. But my source of uh, scrap lead here, I want to use kind of a hard lead. So I'm using a combination of wheel weights, which are now illegal in Illinois because they say it's too toxic, and to which I say rubbish. And I'm also using some uh, type lead from the, the old printer days when they still used lead rather than computers. So that's a lead slug and there's a lead spacer. And the reason I like this kind of lead is because there's antimony in it and it makes it much harder. Tin and pewter would also be great but it's highly expensive compared to this lead which really is free. Also on the table here we got a few other tools. We got some different ladles that we're going to use and we'll probably use the smaller one for the the soldiers like this is real easy to handle the handle is insulated these all need to be preheated too though so sometimes I put the uh, ladles right like that and this is my tool for scraping the dross the yellow bucket is full of uh, wheel weights primarily and this Folgers can is my dross bucket and it's just about full. Yeah, I'm at the end feet soon. <laughs> okay, Jordan, you got your glass on. Let's see how you do with scraping the dross. And that's all waste material. In a large foundry, they would uh, send that to a smelter and re reuse it. <clears throat> Remember, the steel clips on the wheel weights will float to the top of the lead because they're lighter than lead. And did you know that gold is two or more times as heavy as lead? Tungsten and mercury are also quite heavy. So he's going to scrape it off until it's nice and clean on the top. Keep going, Jordan. Now more dross will form. Sometimes I use a bottom pour ladle, which I had here a minute ago. The beauty of a bottom pour ladle is that it uh, takes the metal off the bottom of the ladle rather than the top so that the dross does not end up in the mold. 
and these molds are made of aluminum with wooden handles and it will fit into this carrier you see down here with the brass clip so that we don't have to put a C-clamp on it. Now I've got several other videos similar to this. One is where I'm pouring little lead flywheels for my uh, steam engines and another one where I make lead hammers. So be sure and look at those as well. There you go, that's all of it. That's pretty good, Junior. Duplicane Junior. <laughs> The temperature of the metal and the mold needs to be just right or you'll get short shots. For instance, we got half a soldier here. Looks like he'd been blown up in battle. This man is already wounded and missing an arm. Yeah, and this man is missing the gun or the flamethrower or whatever he's got no, there. No, that's, that's complete. Oh, that one's complete. Yeah. That that, that's a good one. It looks like he has a flamethrower. All right, we're ready to pull. Go ahead, he's taking the molds. Putting them together, sliding them into the brass carrier, taking the preheated little uh, ladle. He's got to work fast. Pour them as fast as you can, Jordan. Better get some fresh metal for the last one. Yep. By fresh, I guess I mean good and hot. All right, in a second, we'll see how that works out. Okay, the metal head solidified or hardened. He's taking it out of the uh, carrier there. He's going to separate the two halves of the mold. And you're going to use that old pocket knife, Jordan? Yeah. Taking an old pocket knife here and kind of prying it apart. And we'll see what we got. Actually, I guess that guy's not complete. He needs very little, though. Okay. So. Knock it, him out of there and let's see what we got. That mold has some carbon black on it, like a candle blacking soot that helps act as a parting. Sorry. He's going to preheat those up just a little bit. Now, how do those look, Jordan? Are they good ones or not? Um, goodbye. <laughs> well, he's putting one back. That must be no good. And Any good? Well, he's missing his arm. So. Uh, he's missing an arm, so we're not quite hot enough yet. So, we got this good guy. It looks... <laughs> he's not wearing any armor on his upper half. Yeah, man's without an arm, so back in the pot it goes. And we're going to wait for it to heat up just a little bit hotter. And in the meantime, Jordan's cleaning the mold. Or, uh, if we weren't doing that, we would take the time to cut off the uh, sprue and the gate from the top of the head. Well, here, I can do that. All right, we've got a few soldiers here from the other day, and Jordan took his gloves off because they're cold, and he's going to just take the side cutters and cut that top off, and we'll remelt that. And then, if necessary, there might be a little flashing there where you can scrape off the, the extra lead. Good. That one's good enough. It's best to wait until they cool before you do this. Yeah, because you need to be able to maneuver your hands without those gloves. Yeah, it works so much better without gloves, is what he said. And here's one that I've already done. Okay, you got a little flashing right yeah. there. Okay, let's get rid of that. That's if the mold isn't quite all the way closed. And that's a three cavity mold. So? Okay, Jordan, let's give it another try. He's working as fast as he can so it doesn't cool down and he put, he put on my MIG gloves, MIG welding gloves, because it's they're more soft and supple than those big horsehide gloves he was wearing. Need more lead. And the metal solidifies very quickly. There we go. Done. Okay, Jordan's going to open this. Oh, the grenade got fell out. And one soldier fell right out of there. Okay, let's put that back up there. 
he's starting to catch on here and get the rhythm. Like Might have to use the hammer or just tap it out of it without damaging the mold. There you go. These are the three that we just did. That and I just did. <laughs> that Jordan just did. Tubal Kane Jr. just did. This arm is a little bit short. I don't know what's supposed to be in that hand. A grenade. Oh, a grenade is supposed to be in that hand. This one looks good. And the flashing can be cleaned off. That's perfect. And this one also appears to be good. So we got two out of three. Not bad. And we will develop a rhythm here as the metal gets hotter in the pot. And I cannot turn the heat up anymore. It's on full blast. But as the metal uh, in the pot uh, goes down and we have less in there, it seemed like I'm able to get the metal hotter. And it looks like the grenade guy's going a little bit better. So. Yeah. So oh. we'll, we'll do a few more off camera. Okay, Tubal Kane Jr. has just retooled now and we're uh, stepping it up a notch here and making some lead sinkers. <laughs> so there's the first batch that he's already done and the mold is over there. And, I think they uh, turned out pretty good. How many cavities we got there? Eight? Uh, eight yeah, eight. Eight cavities. So. And you know, you can buy these sinker molds at any uh, sporting goods shop or some of the big box ones like, uh, what, what's that big one in Peoria, Jordan? Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop, yeah, and Cabela's. Now here's another one. Makes another kind. I'm not going to pour any of those today. Also, they sell molds for making uh, weights for decoys and, and various other things. And it's, it's just such a fun thing to do with immediate gratification. And it's cheap and a great thing to do with your kids or your grandkids. But make sure that you supervise them. Otherwise, it, it can turn very deadly. Uh, yes, yeah. very deadly. He said. <laughs> okay, Tubal Cain Jr. And what you do is you hold the mold together. It's got wooden handles. And you're using the same little ladle. Oh, crud. Oh, it's coming out on all sides, isn't it? Tip your ladle a little, Jordan, so it's just coming out of the spout. There are no uh, real fine details or... Uh, skinny parts of this mold so it seems like there's greater success with a sinker mold. And plus you can use sinkers for fishing which we like to do. Yeah. And he likes to keep his ladle right on the edge of the fire there so it's hot. You don't have to wait very long for this. I think it's ready to open now Jordan isn't it? Almost. You can watch as the metal crystallizes. It's Interesting to see. Okay. Now get your own grandkids and children in to watch this video too. I think they would like it. Well, yeah. I'm Pour open hard, Jordan. I think we got a little bit of hang up on that far end where the we had metal uh, spilling. Yeah, but it's going to open. It still all came out. Yep. Really good. Tap them out of there if you can. Oh, oh those fell out. They come out real easily, and there's no carbon black on that. Yeah, no carbon. So. Lamp black, I guess we used to call it. Got a little bit of metal caught in the hinge, which we will clean up, and then we'll do another batch. There we go, that loose. There it's out. All right, Tubal Cane, let's do another batch. Oh, these are smoking. The wood is. Yeah, that mold is so hot that we got a little bit of charring going on on the handles there. Well, that's been there. Yeah. But you can sure smell it. I used to use this mold at the high school back when I was in my prime. They also sell a split shot mold that uses a little sheet metal insert and that forms the slits in the split shot. One more little cavity there. You can buy an electric uh, furnace too and I think it's available where they uh, sell... Hey, grab it, grab it. we got fire! Oh man! No, grab it, it's actually, it's actually a fire. We had a little emergency there, and we had uh, some smoke coming out of this uh, plate here. So I unplugged it, and I hope it's okay, because I really like that thing. But I had it set at its highest heat, and I hope it's not damaged. 
All right, Jordan, let's open that up. This will be the last batch we make. And they're all perfect. Oh, they're good ones. You know, here in Illinois, we do a lot of catfish fishing, and these big sinkers are perfect for that. Let's see if they all fall out in a row. A little trouble getting those out because I think some of the metal went over the other side of the mold. There, they all came out at once. Good. Point those at the camera, Jordan. Just flip them over so they can see. There we go. Very good. In order to get these sinkers ready to use, all you got to do is take uh, uh, the side cutters and you can nip this off and remelt those little gates. But what I've noticed on these sinkers is along the parting line here, sometimes you get a sharp spot that could cut your fishing line. So I like to take a drill bit and uh, run it through there real quick with a hand drill and uh, yeah. ream the hole out and then there aren't any sharp spots in there. If you want you can file this off, that's a little bit sharp, but we lose a lot of these in the rivers around here because there's so many snags. When you're done with your job here and you still have lead in the pot, you can uh, leave it solidify in there if you want, but another option here is to use a little ingot mold, and this is a, a Lyman ingot mold, and they are a bullet supply producer. It says Lyman in there, so let me, let me fill one of those cavities and see how that works. Just like that. And uh, this batch of lead is getting pretty chilled off, so I barely made it without it solidifying in the ladle. Just like making muffins or little loaves of bread. And that quickly now it's still hotter than a pistol. But there's my little Lyman biscuits, little butter and jelly, and uh, we got a nice meal. Well, Jordan, did you enjoy this little session? Yes, I did. Yes, he did. Did you learn anything? Yeah. Okay, and I think I taught you a few things about safety and how to melt lead and all of that. And uh, with uh, that in mind, uh, this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and... Tubal Kane Jr. <laughs> so long.